Thanks for downloading this episode from Teachers Talk Radio. You can find the full schedule and listen back to all our shows at ttradio.org. This show is brought to you in partnership with John Cat Educational, leading publishers of books, directories, educational guides and magazines aimed at schools in the UK and beyond. Enjoy the podcast. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Teachers Talk Radio. It's The Late Show with Lucy Newberger. And if you've just been listening over on Podbean, you'll have heard The Twilight Show with Ben Thomas. If you want to listen back to any shows, then you can do so on the website, ttradio.org forward slash listen back. This show is brought to you in partnership with John Cat Educational or John Cat Bookshop. And you can find out more and maybe purchase a book if you fancy it at johncatbookshop.com. Uh, I'm now going to pass over to Lucy. Hello, good evening, everybody. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Mr. Rogers. I always appreciate it. And good to have you there in the background for this evening. So this evening, we are back. What are we doing? It's the... <laughs> you can tell I've had a day of it, can't you? It's Tuesday. It's The Late Show. You're back with me, Lucy Newberger. And this evening, we've got a fantastic show about primary geography. And I am very excited to welcome two guests this evening. I've managed to double up somehow. And we will be talking to Catherine and Emma in a moment and getting them on momentarily. I can see they're already here, ready and raring to go, which is great. They've managed to follow my my joining instructions, which is always, always a good thing. And uh, we everybody's, everybody's present and correct, which is great. So before we get into all that, I, you love my weekly updates. You do. I know you do. Some of you do. But uh, they're always comical, if nothing else. Um, we're back to it, aren't we? It's uh, post-Easter holidays. We've, we've gone back into school. It's all started again. Um, feels like we never left, really, doesn't it? I mean, we <laughs> always post-holiday, we think, oh, you know, that, that, was, that was lovely while it lasted, wasn't it? <laughs> and, then, and then on we go. I know that many of you will already be counting down to your bank holidays in May. If you're in the UK, I know I think you get three this year, you lucky bananas. And also the the May half term, May June half term as well. I unfortunately do not get a May June half term. We do get a lot of random public holidays in Portugal. I know we've got a four day week next week um, due to 25th of April. Uh, which is a significant, significant day in Portugal. Uh, so that'll be great. And uh, then I eventually finish for the year on the 30th of June. But I don't get that week's break. However, you know, 30th of June, some of you are probably sitting there going, what? Lucy, that's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. How do you how do you manage that? And I suppose it's it's one of the joys of being in a in an international school. But there is. 10, 11 weeks standing between me and that. So we're going to, to press on. And um, I have welcomed back my absolutely uh, cray cray year fives, which is which is great. And they're, they're full of beans. They're already uh, sitting on chairs ridiculously. And uh, I think some of them have already checked out for the year. So we're trying to desperately rein them back in. Some of them said, have already said to me, how long is it till year five finishes? When am I going to be in year six? And I'm taking it to mean that they're just excited for to be in year six rather than wanting to, to get to get rid of me. I'm not ready to say goodbye to them yet. I mean, some days I am. Some days I'm very much ready to say goodbye to them. And other days I think, no, oh, do you know what? You lot are all right, really. Um, two days in, I haven't made anybody cry yet, which is good. That's always a, always a, a good start. Um, we did have <laughs> the the funny thing today. I sent uh, some groups out to to read, or just in in pairs and threes to uh, to read uh, a version of Aladdin because we're actually looking at early Islamic civilization, and so um, as part of our English, we're looking at uh, stories from a thousand and one nights. And so I sent them out to read today, and suddenly I heard this almighty uh, kerfuffle as there was a giant hornet. Uh, buzzing around uh, the sort of open space that we have, our open atrium. I don't know if it was a hornet, an Asian wasp, I'm not quite sure. But of course, the uh, the look of absolute horror on these children's faces. Uh, so uh, we had to kind of deal with that, calm them down, assure them that if they sat very still, that this thing would uh, buzz off, as it were. And it and it dutifully, it dutifully did. So <laughs> that was uh, 
that was probably the only mad incident for today. Other than that, actually, there's no sort of major updates. I think maybe because we're only two days into term, maybe in a couple of weeks' time, I will I will have some uh, some interesting updates for you. But um, no, it's all all um, all starting well, all starting positively. So I should probably move on and tell you a bit more about this evening's proceedings. So. As you may or may not know, I've been taking a journey through the primary subjects and looking at each one individually. And we have taken quite the trip so far. We have looked at maths. We've looked at writing and guided reading. We sort of did did them as two separate shows because I felt that there was enough there to, to really go into depth. And they were they were both great. We've looked at art. We've looked at PE. We've done history. We've done, there have been quite a few, and it's been really interesting, certainly from a primary point of view, to unpick these subjects in more detail, because I think there is a misconception that, not necessarily amongst secondary teachers, although maybe some, uh, but people in general seem to think that, well, I mean, there are varying opinions about primary teachers, which we shan't unpick too much right now, but the idea that we don't sort of teach anything in any detail and it's very much kind of not not looking at skills and not looking at how we can really develop children's subject knowledge when actually there is much more to it than that. And certainly when you look at recent Ofsted reports and recent research, it shows that actually, you know, we are doing the work. I mean, there's always things we can improve on, but we are trying to equip children across the board with a variety of skills and um, as much knowledge as, as we can to then send them off to secondary school to further develop and further improve their knowledge in, in all these areas. And so I finally arrived at geography. So we did history last time, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and History is something that, that resonates with me a little bit more because I, I did history at GCSE. I chose history over geography, something that to this day I do actually regret. Not that not that I, I adored history, but I would rather have done both. I would love to have had the opportunity to do both because I think it's 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 so important as a as a subject in its own right. And I think many people sort of again are who are not in the know are dismissive of, of geography because they don't understand and appreciate just how much it encapsulates and how much you can do with it. And actually during my research for this show, I've certainly the things I've been reading suggest to me that actually, you know, we do need an appreciation for the subject and children do love to explore and they do love to find out things about the, about the world around them and the people around them and things like that. So I am not a geography expert, which is why I have enlisted help, as I always do when I, when I, when I do these shows, because I think it's important to speak to people who really do absolutely love their subject and really do have have a passion for it and are able to share their knowledge and understanding and take us on a journey with them and look at maybe what's working in terms of the curriculum that we currently have and how we can improve it and maybe where we as teachers if we're not sure where to go in terms of looking to improve our own knowledge and our own practice where we can look for CPD and things like that so I've got two guests who are joining me this evening and I can see that they're both here I can see Catherine McKeever is here and I can see that Emma Chedgy is here I hope I haven't butchered both of your surnames there having a, a surname like Newberger I'm well aware of the butchering that goes on when it comes to these names but I can see that you're both here so if you're both ready you can unmute yourselves and I will ask you in turn to each introduce yourselves so Catherine I'm going to come to you first <laughs> I would like you to introduce yourself briefly and tell me your, your current role in education with as much information as you're willing to give. Amazing. Um, good evening. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity. Really great. Um, very excited for this evening. Slightly nervous, but um, that's probably not a bad thing. Um, so I'm known as Kat, uh, Kat McKeever. You did a brilliant job of my second name, so thank you very much. Um, and I'm currently a deputy head in a primary school for three days a week, and I am a primary professional development lead two days a week for a multi-academy trust, um, so TCAT, which is the Chemnall Academy Trust. Um, we've got um, over 30 primary schools, and I think somewhere in the region of uh, 15 to 20 secondary schools, so we're quite big. Um, 
really um, uh, go from, you know, the top of Essex all the way down onto the coast, uh, Thanet, so covering quite um, uh, a wide area. Um, I've been lucky enough to be a lead practitioner in my time, and that is where I suppose my interest in geography really came from um I took it for GCSE um I didn't take it any further um and then had the chance to work on the curriculum so that's where I am at the moment super busy um uh, very much into teaching and learning so this is a great opportunity so delighted to be with you today thank you for that Kat and uh, uh, hopefully we can is it I hope it's all right to call you Kat for the remainder of this evening please that's do okay, that's absolutely you. fine <laughs> fabulous and Emma good evening to you can you please introduce yourself a brief introduction as to who you are and your your current role in education of course my name is Emma Chedgy yeah you got it right not many people do so thank you for that um, I'm currently sitting down in Brighton on the southeast coast um, my journey through teaching has been slightly different. I started off in secondary um, and was a secondary ge geography head of department. Um, and then I moved to primary where obviously now I am geography lead. Um, loving geography, basically taken my secondary experience as children coming in with not really having much geographical knowledge to kind of really building a firm curriculum that is leading into key stage three as the children leave and transition from key stage two. So they have got a bit of geography behind them um, and also trying to make geography its own discrete subject as well. That's kind of what I'm quite passionate about. As I know a lot of primary schools that maybe hasn't happened in yet. This show is brought to you in partnership with John Cat Educational, a leading publisher of books, directories, educational guides and magazines specifically aimed at forward-thinking schools in the UK and beyond. Have you checked out their latest releases? Don't miss out. Visit johncatbookshop.com to explore their full range of titles and advance your own professional development today. Happy reading. And that's that's something that I think we we need to 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 come back to as well because certainly the school that I'm in at the moment we we have a topic as such and yeah. I think this is a very primary approach but within that we do have to teach separate history and geography lessons so we do have to find topics that lend themselves to to both or if we do a more history topic one term we have to kind of make sure we we hit the geography in a in another but it's more now about finding topics that try and incorporate both mm. so I want to take you both on a bit of a, a, a journey this evening and we'll sort of see where we end up and if we go off on tangents that is absolutely fine if we sort of stick on one area more than others that is fine this is a very chilled out show as I think I said to you to you both um, when I did my computing show, which I forgot to mention, I've done computing as another subject show, um, I spoke to somebody called um, Alan Sue, who described this sort of show as a fireside chat, which is a, a lovely approach. And mm -hmm. although it's quite warm where I am at the moment, I still think that's a, a lovely idea. So that's the, that's the approach we're going for. There's no... Uh, no interrogation and no one's going to pull you up on on anything if anything you are going to be the one guiding the ones guiding me so no pressure <laughs> <laughs> so I want to start with and please don't groan the uh, geography program of study for the national curriculum in England which I'm sure you are both very very <laughs> familiar with and I mean it's not much of a read is it I mean there's a uh, I found this with with history as well, but I just want to read you the the op both of you the opening paragraph again. I'm sure you've read this several dozen times, if not more. And I just want to get your your thoughts on the well on the geography curriculum as it stands at the moment, and sort of what you feel are the good parts and what you feel are the parts that are maybe somewhat lacking. So the idea behind uh, the national curriculum in England's geography curriculum for key stages one and two is the following a high quality geography education should inspire in pupils a curiosity and fascination about the world and its people that will remain with them for the rest of their lives it's a strong start teaching should equip pupils with knowledge about diverse places people resources and natural human and human environments together with a deep understanding of the earth's key uh, physical and human processes as pupils progress, their growing knowledge about the world should help them deepen their understanding of the interaction between physical and human processes and of the formation and use of landscape and environments. 
uh, geographical knowledge, understanding and skills provide the frameworks and approaches that explain how the Earth's features at different scales are shaped, are interconnected and change over time. So either one of you can can jump in first with sort of how you how you feel about that introduction to primary geography. Quite simple then. <laughs> just yeah. just a little bit, just a little bit to get through. Um, I mean, like you said, really, really strong start. However, however, what do I feel? I feel that it's so broad. Mm-hmm. I think that from a primary curriculum, from a teacher's perspective, we think about, you know, capacity for time, the amount of subjects. And of course, that is we want the children to have all of those experiences to be able to come out as skilled geographers. But I think putting it together in a couple of paragraphs like that, you can read what you want to, can't you, into that? So, and and I don't know, Emma, as a secondary Mm. um, colleague or someone that's gone from secondary to primary, Mm. you can see how... um, that there's a lack there's a there's a link missing isn't there between that key stage two to key stage three and actually what are we doing I mean it's so broad and yes we would love to hit all of those things but how do we how do we do that that's the challenge I think absolutely and you know come going from key stage three four and five into primary you know there unfortunately there just hasn't been really strong push for geography to be part of the curriculum there's always things that kind of fall off and obviously um you know t- like you mentioned time there there's always a real time um uh, barrier to everything we have to do in our schools and, and put, put into our curriculum but geography when I joined my school seemed to kind of just get like you know, almost not overlooked but like yeah yeah you know that's kind of like we're gonna have to knock that off because we haven't got enough time and actually it's really important that these mm-hmm. children are transitioning to to key stage three with a knowledge of the world that they live in no matter how small their knowledge is but some knowledge of it and I was just finding that children coming through and actually it's quite evident today in adults that they don't really know their basic knowledge you know five oceans and seven continents a lot of adults I think probably couldn't even name them yeah and that that they're having to come out of key stage one you know with with that that. and they are huge absolutely massive things to comprehend even for adults yeah I agree I mean certainly I've I've played uh, various games with uh, classes I've taught sort of I mean I'm going to call them geography based games I mean in very simple very simple terms they are but the the, the number of sort of things where uh, is, is is Germany a country it's kind of things like that and you sort of think you don't obviously you never want to shame a child but it's it's things mm. like when you're when you're getting sort of fives and sixes asking you that you think mm. oh gosh something's gone a little bit and i'm pointing out a very very sort of simple example but it's it's oh gosh something's gone a little bit amiss mm-hmm. here definitely yeah. but just kind of scurrying on through this doctor we won't dwell on it for too long because it's not the most thrilling reading but what sort of jumped out for me is that you know stating the obvious here with geography uh, sort of in particular not so much well versus other subjects I mean there's there's knowledge and skills across across the board but certainly for for geography for me there was a very sort of clear knowledge element and then alongside that there are the skills that you need in order to carry out research carry out field work and things like that and it just doesn't seem to me like in the curriculum that that's expressed particularly well it's sort of alluded to but it's not mm-hmm. again it's it's not helpful so developing that contextual knowledge it's like okay great but what contextual knowledge and then um the geographical skills needed to collect analyze and communicate a range of data interpret a range of sources and communicate geographical information in a variety of ways i mean what on earth does a teacher do with that (laughs) exactly (laughs) oh dear yeah um i i mean field field work for us to be perfectly honest, what didn't really exist. So putting all of that kind of knowledge and then trying to get out and actually use those observation and use, you know, those the sketching and, and the measuring the recording, it's it, it became it, it is really difficult to kind of steer the children um towards even you know developing those skills because you have such a short time to be able to do it. And sometimes, well, you know, field work just doesn't exist. 
So you have to go out of your way to kind of create something from your local area, which again, they then have to learn the skills to actually, um, you know, go out and do all that observation and then record. And then, so there's so many cross curricular, but if they haven't done, you know, what I'm trying to say is they haven't got that basic kind of math knowledge to go out and then collect data and then transfer it and, and observe it and record it and show it as, you know, data, then you're kind of already stuck, aren't you? I think as well from thinking about it now uh, quite reflectively um, that um, I just think we would love um, all children to get that and that's what we really want but we're massively lacking in expertise when it comes to subject knowledge and I know that that was something you wanted to talk about this evening but um, I think that to give the children what they need, we do need to ensure that our teachers have the subject knowledge in order to take a document like the national curriculum, like all of the things that are mentioned in the geography section, and to actually know what that is. What does that look like? What what does field work look like? What does data gathering look like? Um, what does that look like in year one, in early years? What does that look like in year six? And how can we ensure that they are getting the depth and the breadth that they need that we, you know, and that teachers know that they're doing the right thing. And so I think even before we get to that stage, we need to really reflect and think, actually, as teachers, as a collective, do we have the knowledge and understanding that we really need in order to facilitate that? I think that's a really good point because actually the um, you know staff that I've worked with, I've just assumed that they know from me being a specialist, I suppose, I'm just assuming that people have this knowledge of geography already and they know, you know, what certain vocabulary means, but actually they don't. So it is about training the staff to have that specialist knowledge to go in and then deliver, you know, really quality geography teaching. But that's quite a big ask, isn't it? Because you've then got to dedicate staff training time to it. And actually, how much of a push is that in schools, you know, given the fact that we've got a limited time to do everything that we need to do? And it's, of course, with with the, the primary curriculum as a as a whole, there is so much happening. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. actually, we, we think we have all this time at the start of the year and we go in with the best of intentions or for, for whatever reason, your school is focusing on a particular thing and it might not be humanities it might be oh we're doing a big drive on maths this year we're doing a big drive on on english on science on computing on whatever it is and as you say something drops and it is usually things like the arts the humanities that that fall by the wayside which is very sad but it's interesting that you've both touched on the lack of geography training for teachers i've got um i've got many bits of paper in front of me this is how i know it's a tuesday <laughs> because i've got highlighted I, I love a research rabbit hole and I end up finding all kinds of bits and bobs and it looks like utter chaos, but it is organized chaos. Um, and one of the articles that I found was on uh, TES and it's from 2021. And uh, I'm going to use a, 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 a dirty word, I'm afraid, off the uh. word, uh, reveals concerns over primary school geography. And um, it's uh, the sort of the, the headline is uh, you know inspectorate warns that almost half the schools it focused on last year were not meeting the the national curriculum and one of the reasons they allude to is that lack of geography training for teachers and it says that very few teachers have been trained in teaching geography um in the schools that Ofsted visited uh it found that some teachers remembered a brief session on the subject as part of initial training uh, in some cases, the lack of a background in geography led to teachers not drawing out important geographical concepts or introducing errors or misconceptions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to say, focusing, thinking about my own teacher training, I I remember very doing very few geography sessions. And actually, I can't, I know they happened, but this is going to show how, how little they feature. I couldn't possibly tell you what, what they entailed, which is shocking. Mm yeah i suppose for me that's quite hard to kind of comprehend because my pgc was secondary geography so that's all i've ever known so then upskilling and switching to primary um you know i just thought that kind of you'd everybody had been trained in everything to teach but obviously that that isn't the case i was a bit naive i think going in um but i think having someone positive leading the subject has a massive impact because geography is obviously i eat and breathe it um and every conversation turns around to something geographical my staff are 
you know highly amused by it how did you get to get to talk about climate change or you know um something to do with geography at the end of that um i think if you've got someone who's just constantly talking about it and being really positive about it and driving that subject um i think that can maybe enthuse staff to get on board and be oh no actually your geography is you know it's quite good actually oh and they sometimes they come to me now and say oh I've look i saw that on the news and that's that's, that's geography isn't it and i'm like yeah brilliant and it's just giving people that boost and the realization that actually yeah that is geography is in the news every day geography is all around us let's talk about geography more yeah absolutely i think from i mean i'm quite really lucky and actually you know have been in the privileged position um to be able to drive um geography forward as part of the trust and i think as a trust we we really looked and, and, and thought about the curriculum that was out there. And I know, Emma, you spoke earlier about, you know, teaching as a discrete subject. And we knew that that was something that we were really desperate to do. And actually, you know, we went out and I looked into what CPD we could get from external experts. Um, and actually, what did we have in-house? So, you know, not dissimilar to yourself, Emma, it suddenly turned out that actually we had loads of people that had done a degree in history or geography or another, you know, foundation subject. And we weren't really utilising that. And that there was a, there's a, there's, there are passionate people about it. And that's what we really wanted to make the most of. And I think the minute that we started as a trust putting that professional development in, you could literally feel the energy yeah in the room because people like you said emma they absolutely loved it and were like oh my goodness i just i remember this and i rem- and and i remember doing this and probably i have to say probably more so from a secondary point of view like early on mm. um and then from primary school but it wasn't taught necessarily as a discrete subject and i know lots of schools and um, we've we've definitely come away from um, that topic based now um but really thinking about um you know providing teachers with that and then that that professional development cascading out and utilizing what we do have um as a profession which is lots of people with lots of um you know depth of understanding that we can really utilize and i think once honestly seeing this room of teachers who were building mountains out of of something and doing a tree line and doing the mountain to, you know the snow top and they they honestly came out of it just saying this is brilliant this is we need this for foundation subjects and we need it for things like geography because it it is all around us mm-hmm. the children are surrounded by it all of the time and i think you know there are lots of links that have been missed and i often think about for example rivers um often touched on um during a topic on egypt yeah. um if you like <laughs> the nile the only river that ever existed yeah. um oh. And uh, exactly, I'm sure and their teachers. I'm sure there are primary teachers who are going, "Oh yeah," because we've all oh, been, we've, we've all, all done, we've all done like it. That. You know, the fertile, oh. the fertile fields around the Nile, and it was thinking, well, actually, if you teach that as, as a discrete subject, suddenly you're making these amazing connections, and then um, it it was just really interesting hearing the feedback. And I think that teachers really appreciated having that time put into the foundation subjects for their subject knowledge because they're let's face it we all turn up every day to make a massive difference to these children and actually geography is one of the things that will really turn it around so absolutely interesting yeah sorry emma go ahead no i was just going to say that when i was doing my degree i I think it was sold as the the best degree to to have going into basically anything because it was so broad geography just encompasses Mm. everything you know all relationships between the people and the environment you know even looking around where i'm sitting now everything in here is connected to geography you know the wood where um, my doors have come from you know the electricity i'm using so it is it is just we are living and breathing geography every single day and i think people neglect to realize just how cross curricular it is that you have mm. the science in there you have the maths you have the written work you have the using sources you have i mean it's and yeah. you I think people do forget about that. And interestingly, you've, you've covered a lot of the things that come up in this TS article as well. So the this is extraordinary to me, the, the idea that, that schools perhaps are not meeting the national curriculum. But when it's that broad, how can you mm. determine whether <laughs> they are or not? That that document, you I don't think you could you could 
concretely say whether people are, are meeting it or not because you have given such broad scope that you know even if you're scratching the surface you're still doing you know something something towards it so i find that a very strange idea and how the how they measured that i'm not quite sure it doesn't say but it also talks about the field work concerns that you um have all talked about as well but also the the other thing and i think emma this will will speak to you but also to you as well catherine it says that uh, very few primaries actually work with secondary schools mm -hmm. um to sort of see how they can kind of collaborate, how they can work on curriculum together. Um, uh, but the report does recognise that there are many strengths of teaching geography at primary school. Well, obviously, we, we've established that. Mm. But in terms of partnerships between primaries and secondary schools, have either of you done that before, looked at that, experienced that in any way? Do you want to go, Kath? <laughs> no, it's okay, Emma, you go <laughs> for it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've got a really strong link with our feeder, our secondary that we feed into, um, and we have actually met with the geography lead there and talk, and said, what do, you, what do you want our geographers to look like? What do you want them to look like when they transition from key, key stage two to three? What do you want them coming in knowing? What are the basics? Um, and I was asking that question, obviously, from being on the other side as well. There were things that I knew that I wanted the kids to know, the, the children to know when they came to me, so I could just have a baseline of actually they do know their continents, they do know their oceans, they do know, you know, have got some locational knowledge. Um, so we actually had, some, we've had a few successful meetings looking at um, how we can work together um, and what they want the kids to kind of know when they come in um, and also working together to create a unit, um, a transition unit from Key Stage 2 to Key Stage 3, which I've just finished writing about. Uh, it looks a lot about sustainability actually, which obviously is very much lacking from the national curriculum. Um, and so, yeah, we've had a very successful working relationship. And I think the secondary school really appreciated it, actually, because um, they know we're on board. They're actually like, oh, actually, geography is a, not a serious subject, but I kind of it is becoming a more of a serious subject, isn't it? Out of all the other foundation subjects as well. Um, I think that it's great to have a link with your local secondary school so much easier and the kids when you go back to see them I went back to see some of them today that had transitioned last year and they were like yeah we're really enjoying geography yeah we know it we know what geography is Mrs Cheji and that's because as geography lead I kind of drilled it into them that when you go to secondary school you will just have geography lessons you know three a fortnight four a fortnight whatever and this this is a real subject this is what you need to be known before you go in. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, as a trust, we're really lucky. Like I said, we, we have secondary schools and primary schools, and it's something that we are, um, we're definitely working on. I think it, it could improve. Um, but I know that I spent quite a lot of time with um, some of the secondary lead practitioners and the, just the, the information you know from them so it was very much you know cat if they can come up knowing what geography is we would just absolutely love that because what was what was happening was children were turning up and asking when they were going to do topic um and so we're already seeing that shift and actually um i think as well the world that we live in you know we have you know for example we use a lot of things like google classrooms and, and google, uh, gmail spaces we're really trying to get that communication out there and actually to make those links and um and i think that um we're all quite passionate as a as a trust and as teachers, I would say that, you know, we want the children to leave year six being really, really confident with that and thinking about as well, we, you know, had a great conversation with some secondary colleagues about, you know, concepts and actually what kind of vocabulary are we using around that? If, you know, if we're talking about um, children being able to, you know, talk like a geographer to make generalisations, it'd be to be able to write like a geographer and actually you know there's huge equity in that that when they then go up to secondary school they've got more than half a chance and I know that I'm sure there was some research done about you know geography is very much seen as the subject that you know failing children in particular boys took at GCSE because that's just what you took and and actually that's not what we want for our children so the only way we can do that is to build those relationships between primary and secondary to ensure that we're all singing from the same hymn sheet really. In talking about all of this and in talking about um, primary geography, I want to talk to both of you a little bit about, okay, so we've talked about what 
the, the fact that the curriculum we have is so broad and is almost to the point of ridiculousness. So, and we've talked about how teachers, you know, are lacking in subject knowledge sometimes and how that can be improved and how we can help them and possible links between primary and secondary. And that's great. But if, and I'm sure both of you have an experience in this, being the teachers that you are with the, with the knowledge that you have, in building a geography curriculum for your school uh, or schools, where does one begin then? Because you've got hugely unhelpful information, really, from the, from the curriculum itself. You've got a subject that we've said is so cross-curricular, so broad. Where, how do you, how would you start? Where do you begin? If you're sitting down as a group of teachers, group of primary teachers with your leadership and looking at whether it's your school improvement plan as a you know kind of wider thing or whether it's just looking at the curriculum across the year groups, how, how do you start? Where do you begin? And I don't know who wants to, to dive in first with this. Emma, it sounds like you're probably in the in a really good place, seeing as you're just on the other <laughs> side of this at the moment. I am, yeah. I think when when you had some tech issues, Lucy, and this is kind of what we ended up talking about. So I was just saying how I, um, my frustration moving from secondary to primary was the kind of the lack of curriculum, really, uh -huh. and how it was all just kind of merged, as you say, as topic, and the children don't really, you know, see them as discrete subjects, history and geography. So for me, and I was saying, I'm about at the end of my 15 month journey, really, of, of rebuilding, rewriting this curriculum. So we've got something now where every year group does it three, you know, every alternate terms, well, alternate half terms, and it's linked to loosely to the topic that they're doing overriding topic um and the way i did it was yeah it was literally just i had to just sit down look at everything that was being offered was it geography or was it history because you know people kind of were getting a bit confused um i basically stripped it all back and looked for any gaps which were obviously there were quite a few and then along with obviously the national curriculum by my side um because it's so extensive and my previous knowledge um, yeah, I just got to work and just slowly built up and it all kind of came together really like a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Um, uh, it took about 15 months, really, from start to finish to make sure that everything's resourced and overview sheets are written and we can show progression and we've got pre-assessments, post-assessments. So we're kind of ticking everything. Um, so, yeah, it was a long haul. I didn't just do it on my own. I did have um, help from the history specialist, actually, because uh, he loves building. He rebuilt the um, history curriculum as well. Um, so, yeah, I just had to invest a lot of time in it. And I did think what, you know, what's really relevant as well to these kids? What what do they what do we want them to kind of leave and progress through knowing about? And for me, obviously, I'm a massive driver of sustainability. Um, in Brighton and Hove, we're lucky enough to be pioneering the um, the project of our city, um, our world, which is um, a climate change, sustainability and environmental education programme. Um, so for me, um, I've tried to embed something to do with sustainability as well across all the year groups because it's obviously very much lacking, but it's so relevant today. Mm -hmm. I was just actually looking, I've got it in front of me because... Um... A very great friend of mine is uh, somebody who you may or may not be familiar with, Dr. Stephen Scoffham, who mm. um, uh, I've just got his article in front of me about sustainable uh, development goals and embedding those within within mm. the geography curriculum. And uh, so the things like, you know, uh, no poverty um, and uh, life on the land, life below the water, climate action, all these things, water and sanitation. Yeah. And I know certainly there are, um, a number of books available that that talk about this and talk about really embedding the idea of sustainability within our geography teaching given how important that is now yeah <clears throat> absolutely yeah we um so i suppose in a in a different way um because i was doing it more as a lead practitioner with an overview really trying to to understand what what is geography and what would it look like in, in, in one of our schools? Um, and lucky enough to work in, have a base school that I could kind of um, put that into practice. And I have to say, again, the dirty word Ofsted, their research reviews were actually really helpful. So their, geog their geography one was really helpful and, and really 
it became quite apparent that concepts were something that we'd have to really look into. So thinking about those substantive kind of making them manageable units, so scale, place and space mm-hmm. and things like that. And then your disciplinary ones. So thinking about cause and effect and classifying and describing so that they so that the children were coming across these concepts, not just once, um, but they were building and connecting to to what they'd already done. Um, I think we had to really think about key stage one in particular, um, because, you know, coming out with that they needed a really clear understanding of of where their place was in the world and and thinking about you know the continents and the oceans and actually they're huge that's that's something massive you know physically but also you know like um you know to to explain that to a child um to for that understanding to be there really needed to think then about what concepts were we covering and where were we going to be able to build on those and so that actually all of those basics and very much about them within the world was very much the key stage one. So their place in the UK, so their neighbourhood and then and, and building that out uh, up. And then as they came into key stage two, moving it, you know, into into the wider world. So but they that we understood quite quickly that they they really needed a really clear understanding of, of themselves first. Uh, but like I said, they the um the research reviews were actually really quite helpful. And also balance that out with then the pe- uh, the pedagogy behind it. So making sure that, you know, that they were revisiting, that they were connecting, that they were reviewing and reflecting and thinking about the vocabulary that was being used. Um and also inquiry based so giving the children you know a a hook to really get them to start thinking and what we really wanted was a child to say for example about rivers in general you know rivers start or this is you know you will find towards the estuary whatever you want to say so using all of that and being knowledgeable enough so when we built the curriculum it was very much about building on the knowledge connecting it back to what they'd already done or where they were contextually and I suppose for us I would say that a a school in Margate for example their geography curriculum should be different to mine in Crawley so I'm just up the road from you Emma um you know so in comparison like our, our curriculum should be different so we had to take that into consideration but I would say then once we had the concepts and we were happy with that they were the ones that we were going to focus on we really thought about the core knowledge what was it that we wanted them to to know the facilitating so how are we going to bring that to life and then what skills but I think the real work started with what does that skill look like in year one what does it look like in year three and what does it look like in year six and that's really that that was really tricky but that's how we built our curriculum up really interesting because as you were talking about um the sort of children first learning about their sort of their neighborhood kind of what's familiar to them I was getting sort of such kind of Vygotsky Piaget sort of (laughs) flashes of kind of yes because you know children that kind of idea of that they can you know they're not necessarily capable of understanding much more than this of their own immediate surroundings their own immediate Mm -hmm. thoughts and then as they get older and understand you know how to how to share with others and they develop that theory of mind they can then look into more because I've said I've talked about um I've done a given a talk before on international mindedness and actually you made me think of my research that went into that about the (laughs) idea of how on earth can you teach children about being globally minded when they don't understand necessarily that uh, when someone takes their their rubber that that's not the biggest crime against them (laughs) yes (laughs) <laughs> so there's an awful lot of psychology that goes into this as well and they say us you know this is this is again what's fascinating to me about teaching and education in general and particularly at this primary level we're working with an age range that is so fundamental in terms of what we're doing and and the idea that we're not putting thought into what we're doing and that there's not so much that is behind these curriculums we're developing is is just ridiculous to me particularly when I you know when my brain's going off in all directions like that and just being inspired by the things that you're saying to me. So, mm. yeah, really interesting. Mm. 
we did um through building the curriculum that that I've built we we kind of had these big ideas going through all the year groups so um, everything was linked to the big ideas that would be introduced so for example um I'm a geographer because I can locate different places I'm a geographer because I can investigate how humans and physical geography change and impact on each other and diversity I'm an impact I'm a geographer because I explore and know about different places people resources and environments and every single lesson we come back to one of those big ideas this is how you're going to be a geographer this is you as a geographer this is you today mm. so you know when the kids are leaving the classroom and going outside it's like Mrs Chesley I've been a geographer today <laughs> it's like <laughs> have you done that but at least they're using the word and they're kind of understanding that it is about you know the air the, the world around them. <clears throat> so we've built yeah built that through the, the three big ideas and then everything like you say Kath having a hook we've, we've we kind of based ours on the big what's the big question you know so all oh, we're going to explore what's the big question you know what does my school look like from above or you know what is the UK we talk about the UK but what actually is the UK and then having a, a big reveal, which is their kind of assessment at the end to show all of their knowledge that they've learned. And actually, I know what the UK is now. I can name all the countries in the UK. I can name the capitals of the countries in the UK. So um, I think, yeah, going going back to building the curriculum, um, it's got to be relevant. And you really do have to invest the time in um, and also making it accessible to them so they understand now. You know, my kids know I'm a geographer because, oh, yeah, I can l use a map. I can do this. I can do that. They know what's associated with it. But I think that's probably because we keep it quite, I suppose, to their to their level, to their language. If that makes sense. It was only actually yeah. in <laughs> teaching geography in the U in when I was still in the UK or teaching these topics that I learned the difference between the UK, Great Britain and the British Isles. And of course, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. I think when you first realise that they're not in fact all the same thing it shouldn't have been as mind-blowing for me as it was at the time I think it was around I think it was around sort of very very early in, in my teaching career I'm embarrassed to admit but yeah the things that you come across that as this goes back to uh, our kind of adult knowledge of of sort of geographical concepts and things in general but the fact that yes that was a um surprise to me is embarrassing to admit to the to the internet but there we go sorry I feel like I, I just interrupted somebody but, <laughs> that's all right I also think that when you're you know when people are considering their curriculum it's being it's being really honest and I know that when we as a school it's a you know we knew there was a massive deficit <laughs> the children were going through the school and they didn't have you know we were touching on parts of of the national curriculum and yes to a to an extent that that was there um but we had to be really really honest with ourselves and say we know at this point in time our curriculum needs to be this and it needs to be this further up the school as well because those ba that basic understanding really wasn't there so that you know the, their understanding of themselves and where they were in the world um and, and I think it's really interesting as well that Emma said you know you know that worry when people are oh, our curriculum's completely done and it's dusted and, it, and it's it's all tied up no it can't be can it because actually it's everything's changing all the time let alone environmental sustainability but also you know, the children have over the past couple of years had, you know, some some gaps within their education. But also, I think, you know, just general curriculums and the coverage that that was there. So I think what our curriculums are now will be very different to five years time and, and rightly so. So I think when looking at a curriculum and building it up, it's knowing that there, it needs that flex within it. Mm -hmm. Yes, to tick it to, to tick the boxes. Um, but also to be able to genuinely look and say, do you know what, for these children within our context, we absolutely know where they are right now and what they need. And actually, when our year ones come through, all the way through, they're going to have such a different, um, you know, ability and, and depth of understanding. And that's OK. And we're going to do our best for the other children and make sure that through retrieval practice, I mean, we do a bit of a seesaw it sounds like you Emma so mm -hmm. we do you know a geography unit and then a, and a history unit yeah. um and then but within that if they do it if they're doing a history unit they have a geography retrieval session every week because we know that there's a deficit when it comes to their their understanding and that's been really powerful and I think that's really helped the children um to be able to talk 
and 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 to have confidence with their geography skills no i think that's i mean this is it's it's so interesting listening to both of you because there's such a clear passion for for the subject and for for ensuring that you know we are able to teach to the best of our ability and i'm just going to take a moment to say that if you have a passion for a particular subject or indeed any area of education you probably can find a book relating to that through our sponsor this evening who is john cat's (laughs) education they are a leading publisher of educational books and magazines and if you have a look through their catalogue you can pretty much find anything you like relating to to education to teaching and there are a couple of uh, new and exciting releases that uh, you can see on their Twitter feed. I can't remember the titles at the moment because there's so many of them but please do go and check it out so if you're looking to add to your book collection or just looking for some light reading on geography or indeed any other subject do go and check that out. So yeah. So we are talking about developing the curriculum in, in geography and I had a, a hunt around as, as well. And I looked at things like uh, the Geographical Association, the Royal Geographic Society, things like that. And much of what you've said, uh, they they sort of agree with. They agree with kind of starting with, um, you know, understanding that geography is an inquiry led subject that wants to answer questions like, you know, where is this place? What is it like? And starting with those questions or the big questions. I think it was Emma who mentioned those and then almost scaling that down to make it relevant to to your local environment and I think that's what again is so fantastic about a subject like geography is that you can absolutely step outside your your school building I mean of course this is as we have alluded to this is easier in some parts of the UK or indeed the world than than others but with you know a little bit of imagination and it it can be something that is that children feel speaks to them and is relevant to them and they can see in real life and have that real life context which is you can't always get with with other subjects but with geography because it is around you every day you absolutely have the capability to to bring that to life which i think is brilliant kat i feel like kat i feel like you wanted to say something there oh no 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 i'm good thank you all good (laughs) (laughs) but i just wanted to so we sort of talked about kind of where where that starts and, and where it sort of it sort of leads to. And I've looked at and actually I found an example where I've lost my I've lost my piece of paper now. So an example um, curriculum, I suppose it's a curriculum map really that indeed actually backs up completely what um, what you were saying about starting. Uh, so starting with a focus on the UK, for example, if you're in the UK. And introducing things through um, terminology and through stories and games and things like that. And again, I think that we forget that certainly with the younger years, and this has come up Mm. in other subject conversations I've had, where we forget that we can use stories and books and things like that to link geography in across a variety of subjects and across the curriculum. I don't know if any of you have, well, I'm sure both of you have experiences of where you've used certain stories or certain things that children are already familiar with to say oh and to actually drop in geographical terms or drop in and say oh you know I can't even think of an example I don't know if one of you could give me an example (laughs) of an occasion where where you've been able to sort of drip feed terminology or geographical concepts or ideas through a through a particular story Um, I'm not sure if it's well I'm not sure if it's a story but when obviously the late queen passed we talked a lot about the commonwealth Mm. and how kind of spread out and what that actually meant um I have bought um King Charles has written a really nice um book on the environment and um we use a lot of books and assemblies actually I'm quite lucky that I can lead um assemblies mostly on climate change and um sustainability um but we his book that he's written lately just basically is is so lovely with the illustrations and it takes you on the journey of you know why do we need to be looking after our environment but it's very kind of leveled at you know key key stage one really so it's giving them that kind of understanding of actually if I see something on the floor that shouldn't be there yeah I need to put it in the bin you know we're kind of big drivers on that making sure our environment's looked after I think texts are something that and stories you know probably in some cases underutilized we Mm -hmm. we've made a real point of you know not making any tenuous links but (laughs) i know that in year three um they have um they 
read uh, Hen in a Wardrobe. So it's about um, a, a child who ends up going uh, back to Algeria, back to his um, family with his father. And actually that really helped us drive the geography curriculum for year three um and it was amazing to see the links that the children were making and they were like oh right okay although well, that's why he was there and that's what he was doing that's what his father missed because it was so different to where he was in the uk and that's why he was you know sleepwalking at night and he really was he's really homesick because it was totally different um and I think that that's something as a school and as a trust that we're really interested in getting some really great quality texts. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I really wish there were more nonfiction, really great uh, nonfiction quality texts out there as well. And I think that's something that um, would be great as, you know, as a profession to be to be able to share. You, you know, you have your, your standard ones that you can go to. But I think that... Um, if if we want the children to be able to write and read and all of that like a geographer then we need to be able to do that but I mean within fiction there are just so many um amazing stories and I know at the moment um I think it's a uh, boy overboard was another one that was that was really powerful for the children and they could really make connections within their geography topic for that as well about you know a child having to leave um his uh, country and, and move over here so I think that there are loads of opportunities um, to make those links and to really um, allow the children to see how in worlds that they might not come across um, or things that they're not that connected to, actually how stories play a massive part in that. So it's, it, it's, it's great and very exciting to think that, you know, our curriculums can change to to incorporate all of those. Mm. Lucy, have you gone again? Uh-oh. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, can, you can still hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going we're gonna to have to, we're going to have to call it a day because um, I, I can't hold the geography for um, <laughs> any more than I already have. I, I can't do it. I can't. Well, you've done a sterling job so far, so I think... It's not a hill I'm willing to die on, (laughs) that's for sure. Um, So it was a really good chat, um, Catherine and Emma. I've really, really enjoyed it, actually, um, as a historian. Uh, It's surprising, (laughs) isn't it? Why why would I ever enjoy a conversation about geography? I've gone to the dark side. (laughs) Well, I wouldn't go that far. (laughs) It has been interesting and eye-opening in the sense of what I've you know, what I've managed to sort of learn about primary geography, um, in essence, um, which is quite nice for me because I, I currently teach part time in all through um, oh. school. Mm. And I have seen uh, and it's a special school um, for deaf students. Mm-hmm. And um, I have seen them teaching geography um, at primary level and secondary level. Um, so it is quite interesting for me to get an insight into the sort of things that they're doing or could be doing or whatever. So mm. that's interesting. So thank you very much indeed. Well, well, we'll see if we can get Lucy back one more time. Hang on a minute. Okay. She's requesting. Oh, great. Lucy, can you hear us? I can. I'm sorry. I can, there we are. I can hear back. you all. And I just, hey. Oh, I don't, honestly, I, I hate tech. Um, thank you, Rogers, for, for holding that down for a second. Um, sorry, we were we are back in the game. Um, I was just about to say before I disappeared again that the Geography Society beautifully encapsulated what you both said by saying that geography enables children to make sense of their world. However, a geography education must encompass more than this. It must provide opportunities which have transformational effect on a pupil's perception of themselves and their relationship with learning. And it must enable students to develop a connection and understanding of the world and their place within it. That's beautifully put. (laughs) I think that's lovely. Right, before uh, everything, before I lose you all again, the the last thing I kind of wanted to ask you is, and this is probably a little bit of an on-the-spot thing, (laughs) on-the-spot question, which is, if you could pass on any advice to somebody who maybe is finding their geography teaching a little bit challenging or uh, an ECT coming into uh, teaching their first sort of few geography lessons, what would your advice be in terms of, well, 
in general in terms of you know resources to look to or just how to go about planning their first few lessons or how to just approach the subject in general so either one of you can go first on that ridiculously broad question okay. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you bouncing that to me emma i'm bouncing I'll go first then and <laughs> um, so i think first of all know your context know where you are and 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 physically you know your location and really think about what expertise you have within the school so you know is there somebody who has a geography degree is there somebody that you connect you can connect with in another school for example if you're lucky enough to be part of a trust that does loads of communication or within a local educational authority that um has those links do that um i would definitely get on to the internet get onto twitter there are a huge amount of people to follow um who really signpost some amazing things um and i think i have to say again you know maybe read read the Ofsted review they are quite good take everything with a pinch of salt <laughs> but i think it's having those professional conversations oh and... Catherine, you're just trying to make me feel sick tonight <laughs> i'm really you? sorry i you... know <laughs> I'm, I'm trying not to say it. But I love the fact every time you mention them, you're like, I, ju- I don't want to I don't want to mention it. I don't really want to offend anyone. But, <laughs> um, yeah. And I just think um, communicate, be open and anything that you do come across, just make sure that it's appropriate for your context, your location and that it's um, linked to something that the children can uh, can really um move on with and and just i think as well just have a really good understanding of what geography is and what it is to be a geographer and i think that that comes down to some personal professional development and and just be curious because it's actually very interesting i think it's just dpd isn't it it's just constant like you know i i just look at the news to see what's happening to do anything to do link with geography and you know and tomorrow i'll go into the staff room and say oh did anybody see that last night you know that volcano that's erupted in i don't know wherever um you know and it'll be like oh yeah and it's kind of getting that starting point that talking and and you know it's, it's just constantly looking for it in the news and talking about it and keeping it really in, every, in the back of everybody's mind. I think if it's there, if it's being talked about, people are likely to go away and do a bit of, you know, reading or watching the news themselves. And they want to come and talk to you about it. They feel proud. Oh, I've lo- oh Emma, I looked at that last night. I saw that. Yeah, what you were talking about, that volcano. Yeah, wow. You know, so I think that um, having someone who's obviously really enthusiastic as well and, and you know, really positive and wants to help as well because I know that there are people who've got you know everyone's got a massive workload but it's still making time for those people that actually need the help and need the direction as well because it is very easy just to you know switch off and just be kind of you know head down and get on with your own stuff get on with your own work but it is about sharing resources it's totally about communication and checking in you know are you all right do you need do you need something or just share you know sharing anything you can get to be fair i'm always on the internet looking at um resources and the tes is great because people have generally made stuff before that you can buy and almost adapt mm-hmm. i mean and speaking of enthusiasm you know both of you have absolutely shown just how far subject enthusiasm can take you so i for both of you, I really appreciate that this evening and sharing your your wisdom with me. Um, thank you so, so much to to the pair of you, to Emma and to Kat, for, for being here, for persevering with the technology and for sharing. I mean, we could have gone on and on and on. There maybe is even another, another show in this to <laughs> truly unpick everything. I would gladly have you both back any time. And... Uh, as far as uh, debuting on on Teacher Talk Radio, you've both done yourselves very very proud. So thanks. So no nerves needed from from either of you. You did you did brilliantly, and I truly truly appreciate both of you joining me and uh, giving up your your Tuesday evenings. So uh, much much appreciated. That's an absolute pleasure. Lovely to talk to you all.
Same. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you both. So we had Emma and Kat there talking all things primary geography, which has been absolutely fascinating for me. And I could have gone on and on. And I'm sure those of you who have joined me uh, this evening, please go and follow them both uh, on, on Twitter, because I'm sure they've got much more more wisdom to share. And hopefully this will be available to listen back to. I realise it is in two parts, but you'll be able to listen back and and catch up with anything you have missed. I have definitely learned a great deal this evening, as I've done with all these subject-based shows. It has been truly, truly fantastic to also showcase just how valuable the us primary teachers are and I know sometimes that we do feel a little bit like we are we are sidelined in favor of secondary teachers not always and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into the into the back and forth uh, about that because I think that you know, we could we could be here all day and I probably would end up starting uh, the pen gate or whiteboard gate of 2023. And I'm not willing to be that person. So I'm going to stop going down down that route. But I think it's it's truly it, it does show that we are that we are doing the work, that there are people out there who are major, major subject enthusiasts and also I think it was Emma who said, or maybe it might have been Kat, I can't remember who said, uh, that Twitter is fantastic and that there are people out there who absolutely do want to share their resources and absolutely do want to have their their brains picked. And it's it's so encouraging to know that people like Kat and Emma do exist and that I can go to them and sort of say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this unit to do with geography or I can go to one of my uh, maths experts or English experts and say, hey, you know, can you help me with this? And so I'd also say to ECTs out there and to people doing their teacher training at the moment that Twitter is fantastic and that these shows are fantastic. And I do treat them a bit like Dream CPD because I'd like to think that, well, if I'm looking for help and support in these areas, then maybe other people are too. So I hope that those of you listening in have found it useful and found it enlightening or as enlightening as I have. Now, looking forward i'm going to be back with you in the week after next because i'm now uh, going to be every other week so we are running low on primary subjects at the moment but there's still a few more to do i know we haven't uh, looked at music in any detail yet so that's definitely on the list along with a couple of others i do still want to revisit science uh, as well so there's 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 more to explore and more to look at so if you know any experts in those areas or anyone who'd like to talk to me about primary music or indeed primary science please do let me know please do nominate them that's exactly how Kat ended up on my show this evening. She was put forward by, I believe, a, a colleague of hers. And uh, he'll be glad to know that she did absolutely brilliantly. And Emma was, um, well, I think, uh, accosted by Tom Rogers and uh, very kindly agreed to be here this evening. So I, I do appreciate it. Um, just a reminder, again, that our sponsor this evening is John Cat Education, a leading publisher of educational books and magazines. So if you are looking to improve your knowledge in pretty much any area of education, then I'm sure you can find something to read in amongst all the material that they have. So all that remains for me to say is have a fantastic rest of the week. And I will speak to you all. You've been listening to Teachers Talk Radio. Tune in live and listen back at ttradio.org. We look forward to hearing from you next time on Teachers Talk Radio.